Well, you came to us with your concerns about Niagara Falls Boulevard, and two on your side is the station that continues to hold the powerful accountable for it. Over the past five months, our reporting exposed dangers and got state and local leaders to take some action. But now the state DOT is clamming up because of a potential lawsuit, and one of the families who lost a loved one on the boulevard plans to sue. Investigative reporter Emily Lampa has their story in this Two on Your Side original. I have good days and bad days. Um, you know, the good days, I think about the good things that, that we did, the good times that we had. And the bad days is, you know, we should be doing those things. Albert Moore Jr. is talking about his girlfriend of nine years, Jennifer Duffin. She is the sixth and most recent pedestrian killed as a result of a crash on Niagara Falls Boulevard. That's one of the hardest things I've gone through in my life. Uh, I wasn't prepared for that. It was Saturday, May 12th. Jennifer, who lived at the Econo Lodge on the west side of Niagara Falls Boulevard, left the motel just after midnight. According to the police report, witnesses saw Jennifer stumbling as she crossed the southbound lanes of the boulevard and turned to walk north along the center turning lane. When Jennifer tried to cross the northbound side, a car hit her in the lane just before the sidewalk. The force of the crash threw her up over the hood and into the windshield. When emergency responders arrived, Jennifer was still alive. They came to my house and said an accident had occurred. Uh, they didn't give me any information and just said that uh, they had taken her to ECMC. And I went over to ECMC and uh, the doctors informed me then that uh, she didn't make it through the surgeries. Jennifer was 41 years old. For Albert, it was hard to process since in the few weeks prior, they had traveled to Memphis and decided to get married. Uh, we had plans to go to Vegas. Um, Albert admits his pain goes well beyond his own loss. He's worried about Jennifer's children, her 18-year-old son and 10-year-old daughter. Her role was her daughter. Uh, she loved her. Uh, and her daughter loved her mother. And I can't imagine what Reagan is going through. Reagan was back at the Econo Lodge the night her mother was hit and killed. The kids, through their guardian, planned to sue the state of New York as well as the towns of Amherst and Tonawanda. We spoke to their lawyer, Jill Winnick. Their mom is gone, and they'll never have the opportunity to, like I said, do a lot of things that every kid gets to do with their mom, you know. It's hard and it's still kind of new. You know, I, I my biggest fear is coming up to like the holidays. It's it's still yet to be seen how hard it's gonna be. Winnick filed the notice of claim in August. Since the state and local municipalities are jointly responsible for the design, construction, and maintenance of Niagara Falls Boulevard, Jennifer's family accuses those entities of negligence and misconduct, alleging that they had prior notice of long-standing dangerous conditions and that they had allowed the boulevard to continue to remain in an unreasonably dangerous unsafe and defective condition. It's not like this was the first one and we didn't know anything about it. You know, there's, you know, five other families that have suffered loss, not to mention the people that have uh, just been hospitalized as a result of an accident on the boulevard. The day before Jennifer was hit, two on your side had actually been out on Niagara Falls Boulevard, showing State Assemblyman Robin Schiminger some of the pedestrian safety deficiencies along the state roadway, namely, missing pavement markings, improperly timed lights, pedestrian signals not working. It was two days before that that we spoke with Amherst Supervisor Brian Culpa, who said the towns were working on getting street lighting installed north of the 290. Fast forward five months, and this is a current look at the section of roadway where Jennifer was hit. Take a close look. Did you miss it? Let's rewind. That right there is someone standing at the edge of the roadway, barely illuminated by the headlights of oncoming cars. Jennifer's death and our reporting galvanized state and local leaders to put pressure on the state DOT, resulting in high visibility crosswalks, funding for the three mile lighting project, and a pledge to make more improvements after a year long study of the corridor. In the hopes of getting some other pedestrian improvements done sooner, the towns of Amherst and Tonawanda completed their own walking audit in June, which found more than 100 deficiencies. And that audit only covered the north half of the six mile stretch of the boulevard.
But when they released this report on October 1st, we went straight to the DOT to find out what they plan to do with all of this information. And they say they're sticking to their original plans, waiting for the completion of their own $300,000 engineering study of the boulevard in July 2019 before making any significant changes. Not to compare tragedies, but when the issue with the young boy that was killed in Delaware Park, that didn't take long at all. I uh, dropped the speed limit down to 30, uh, wrecked barriers, and, and I give kudos to, to Buffalo and the state for, for doing that. How many more people on the boulevard? How many more people have to die? Even though Jennifer was hit crossing the boulevard outside a designated crosswalk, Winnick doesn't believe that fact will affect their case. This isn't the only place that um, injuries or fatalities have taken place. Some of them take place right within the crosswalk. So where you are doesn't make the road safer by any means. DOT statistics show 64% of pedestrian crashes in all of Erie County actually do happen at intersections. Two on your side requested crash data specifically for Niagara Falls Boulevard, and after plotting it out ourselves, found out that the rate is much higher there. Over the past five years, 92% of pedestrian crashes happened at intersections, and according to the county figures, 22% of pedestrians hit we're crossing with the signal. Something needs to be done. Something definitely needs to be done. Not just for this family, but for an entire community. And again, that was our Emily Lampa reporting. Now, according to the notice of claim, the family is hoping to get compensation for medical bills, funeral costs, loss of parental and financial support, as well as pain and suffering in, quote, an amount not yet determined. We also reached out to the state, the towns of Amherst and Tonawanda for their story and about the notice of claim that has been filed against them. All three would not comment to us. And you can read more of Emily's reporting over on our website, WGRZ.com.